from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Thursday, July the 28th, 2022. We open with outrage over comments made by a member of the United Nations Human Rights Council's Commission of Inquiry, or COI, on the war with Israel and Hamas last summer. The commission, which has been heavily criticized for its very strong anti-Israel bias. Well, this week, commission member Milun Kothari, in an interview with anti-Israel website Mondo Weiss, made comments perpetuating a known anti-Semitic trope of Jewish control, saying, we are very disheartened by the social media that is controlled largely by whether it is the Jewish lobby or specific NGOs, and said, I would go as far as to raise the question of why Israel is even a member of the United Nations, claiming that the Israeli government consistently tries to undermine UN mechanisms. The Anti-Defamation League called Kothari's statements appalling, B'nai International calling for his dismissal for the odious remarks. The Simon Wiesenthal Center said the U.S. should consider leaving the UNHRC, and the American Jewish Committee said this anti-Semitic conspiracy is further proof of the body's deep-seated anti-Israel bias. U.S. Ambassador to the Human Rights Council Michelle Taylor wrote, We are outraged by recent anti-Semitic, anti-Israel comments made by a member of the Israel Commission. These unacceptable remarks sadly exacerbate our deep concerns about the Commission of Inquiry and the Human Rights Council's disproportionate and biased treatment of Israel. U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations Linda Thomas-Greenfield wrote there should be no place for such anti-Semitism and anti-Israel sentiment at the U.N. U.S. Special Ambassador to Combat Anti-Semitism Deborah Lipstadt said outrageous that an UNHRC appointed human rights expert on Israel and the West Bank and Gaza repeated anti-Semitic tropes and questioned Israel's legitimacy as a U.N. member. The U.S. Senate Foreign Relations Committee tweeted that the U.N. needs to address this prejudice, undermining its critical work. And international spokeswoman for Israeli Prime Minister Yair Lapid, Karen Hajjoff, wrote, The international community should be outraged by Milun Kothari's anti-Semitic comments, his racist remarks about the quote-unquote Jewish lobby that controls the media, and his questioning Israel's right to exist as a member of the family of nations echo the darkest days of anti-Semitism, calling for the commission to be disbanded and its commissioners disqualified from UN work. The Jewish Agency for Israel said today that a preliminary hearing took place in Moscow this morning in the case concerning the association operated by the Jewish Agency for Israel in Russia and that it was determined that a trial take place on August the 19th. As we reported to you, Russia is trying to shut down the Jewish agency offices in Russia, which help Jews immigrate to Israel and other essential services. Acting chairman of the agency, Yaakov Hagoel, assured that those services would go on. He said the Jewish Agency for Israel plays a critical role in cultivating Jewish identity and establishing a connection to Israel for Jews all over the world. As such, its vital activities that serve the Jewish communities in Russia will continue in order to ensure the community thrives and remains connected to their heritage and the state of Israel. Well, a new emergency room facility said to be the largest in the world has opened at Tel Aviv's Suraski Medical Center, Ichalov. The Sylvan Adams Emergency Hospital boasts high-tech and smart digital services, including a self-check-in, self-taking of vitals, and robots guiding the way. The state-of-the-art 86,000-square-foot facility was funded by Adams, an Israeli-Canadian businessman and philanthropist, with a donation of $28 million. Israel's President Isaac Herzog and Prime Minister Lapid were among those on hand today to dedicate the facility, which Lapid said combines the very best Israel has to offer our incredible human capital, and the technology of the high-tech nation, also lauding it and hospitals across Israel as a model of Jewish-Arab coexistence that he said should also instill pride in every citizen of Israel. 
Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Thursday, July the 28th at 7 o'clock, it's Talmud Study. At 7.30, Alan Dershowitz expresses concerns over the weaponization of the criminal justice system for political purposes. At 8, Nitsana Darshan Leitner describes her work as president of Shurat Hadin, an organization fighting terrorism and safeguarding Jewish rights by fighting boycotts, challenging those who seek to delegitimize the Jewish state, and more. At 9, Mark Golub sits down with Itamar Marcus on L'Chaim. At 10, Erez Sherman speaks with Fox Sports producer and UCLA champion gymnast Ariana Berlin who shares her story of overcoming adversity and achieving greatness. And coming up next, it's Good Week, Israel. And that's the JBS News Update for Thursday, July the 28th, 2022. I'm Tisha Bader. Stay healthy, stay well.